All right, guys. Good evening. Happy Tuesday again. We're back again. So exciting. We got like a week left. The month is almost over. Then July is rushing on in here. I am so excited for what we have in store tonight. Oh my gosh, I've just been running around with my head cut off all day, but it's fine. So I'm excited for what we have tonight. Um, the guests we have on tonight, I've seen some Zoom she's done that's just been like phenomenal. We had her on for like a brief moment when we had um, our CEO on, but it was definitely needed for her to come back and actually dive into us and we get to fully hear from her because I, I love the fact that our corporate team is, the energy is amazing. Um, they just have so many great things in place for us. The way we've just been rolling out, rolling out, rolling out stuff have just been like a whole nother level. Put a one in the comments if y'all tried the new products, all the new products, like put them one in the comments if you tried them. Put a two in the comments if you love them, like I love them. I mean, stress dummies is like number one, but that watermelon is kicking in, trying to take first place. So um, I'm excited. So we have our, <laughs> you got it right there with you, Steph. Sorry, this, this never leaves my side. It's one on every floor, so I have it with me. So um, we have our chief sales officer. I'm getting better with all the abbreviations. I was doing my homework. We have our chief sales officer on with us tonight, Miss Meredith. Oh, I'm going to try it. Teasing? Oh, Nailed it. Uh, all right. So we have our chief sales officer on with us tonight, and I'm excited to have her on. Um, she's, she, she's just a ball of a lot of not only information, but I, I just love her energy. And so I'm glad and thankful that you're able to take time out of your day to be on with us. Um, we have a, uh, a few different, a lot of people that have been with the business, like me, 10 years, Rusty, 20 years, from people that have just started to those that have maybe been um, a little frozen as to what to do next, to those that may love the 4 and one but just can't, you know, comprehend that 4 and one is that easy. You know, you got those people too. We have, you know, uh, those that are right close to their next goal, but but missing it by a little bit that may need that little bit of push. Maybe those that just need that extra push that may goals that, that can be right there, but they just got to see it. So I appreciate you being on with us and um, all you can uh, pour into us. Whew. And I think that's all I had to say. I love it. Thank you so much for that incredible introduction. Um, I'm always so honored uh, and it's never lost on me when uh, leaders reach out and say, Hey, can you hop on our team call? Because here's the thing, like in all honesty, you guys, like leaders don't have to have me on, on the call. And sometimes leaders are like, Hey, we just want to talk to our team ourselves. And so it's always just such an honor. So I just want to say thank you first and foremost, Rusty, Carissa, thank you so much for asking me to be a part of tonight's team call. And I hope and pray that I am able to, um, give a little bit of insight and I'll be happy to answer questions as, as we go through everything. For those of you who are brand new, if, they, if you guys are brand new, uh, first, uh, welcome. Welcome to It Works. I love seeing how oh, we just continue to expand and we continue to share this incredible journey that we get to share every single day. If you are new, um, I'm going to like voluntold you all, which you'll learn that term as you're here with us to uh, go ahead and like say hello in the chat. Like tell me that you're a newbie, um, like shout it out with either a number one or say hi. And for those of you who are watching this recording later, um, I hope you do the same. And uh, it's always good to just see um, who joins in. For those of you who've been in for a while, maybe you've been with It Works for a couple of months, maybe you've been with It Works for a couple of years, or maybe you've been with It Works like Rusty here um, since the beginning, like literally since the beginning. Um, thank you so much for just continuing to lead by example and by going the way. I've had the privilege. I'm going to share with you all just a little bit of my background, and then we'll open it up uh, to whatever you guys would like to talk about. But I wanted to share a little bit about my background and just a little bit of what's on my heart tonight, if you guys don't mind. Um, but 
I've actually been in this channel for a little over 20 years. Um, I started when I was in my early 20s. So if you're new and I love that, yes, I'm a newbie. If you're newer, if you're young, um, that's fine. If you're newer and you are seasoned and matured, that's great too, because this business, the beauty of it is that it doesn't matter your age. It doesn't matter your background. It doesn't matter your career or your title or, or whatever. It is open opportunity for all. And we're going to talk a little bit about that. Um, but I've been fortunate enough to be in this channel and I do call it a channel uh, because it's the cha channel of distribution. Our industry is health and wellness. That That's our products. That's what we get to go out there and talk and share about. And so you'll always probably hear me um, share that uh, I'm part of the direct sales channel, um, but the product category that we're in is health and wellness. And why is that important? Well, the reason why I distinguish that is because <clears throat> we utilize word to mouth. We don't utilize advertising on TV or anything like that, but also the industry of health and wellness is not just a billion dollar industry, it's in the trillion and it's only getting bigger globally. And the reason why that is so important for you guys, it means it's a lot of opportunity because I don't know about y'all, like I'm 102 years old, Rusty is barely younger than me. And I will tell you all, like back in my days, it wasn't about health and wellness, okay? Rusty, you're gonna testify. I'm pretty sure it wasn't about health and wellness and like taking care of yourself. It was just live and let live. And the thing that we're seeing, especially in the last couple of years, is there's this massive shift. There's already been a shift coming for about the last 10 years where people younger and younger are more concerned about how they look, about how they feel, because there is an, an understanding of really knowing that this body is what we take care of. And when we take care of it, it can serve us longevity, right? And so people younger, like in their 20s, they're looking at like taking care of their skin. They're looking at taking care of the inside. They're, they're worried about, are, are we drinking enough water? Let me tell you something. In my 20s, no one in my friend group was coming up and being like, girl, did you get enough water today? Not a single one. I'm just saying, y'all, we didn't have bottles that we carried around like they were our whoobies. No, that did not happen. But let me tell you something. If you catch this girl without like one or three of these, as my husband will tell you on my nightstand, um something has happened to Meredith, right? That's just how it is now. And, it, and the reason that's so important is because that means that people are becoming more aware around the industry that we are in, which means that there is a huge financial opportunity out there for everyone who sees, who, who decides to see it and jump in. In the last two years with COVID, we have seen health and wellness grow substantially, substantially, because people are now even more aware of how vital their health and wellness is to them. Like our health is our wealth, right? There is a reason why that is so close. And so I will always refer to it as, as the channel distribution, but the category that we're in. And when I talk to my friends, they're like, oh, Meredith, you know, what are you, what are you into these days? I'm like, I'm part of the health and wellness channel. Like that's the industry that I'm in still doing the same thing. But the industry is health and wellness. And this is a multi billion slash trillion global economy, like business. Um, I've had the fortune of working with companies, you guys, that uh, probably you've heard of iconic brands like Tupperware and um, Rodan and Fields and Monate. I've also worked for companies that you will never hear of because they were failures to launch. And that is kind of uh, unique. And the reason I bring it up is because it has taught me a lot in this channel to bring some expertise to this company. And I will tell you guys, 20, 20 plus years in this channel, I really thought that the Lord was like, okay, Meredith, it's time to lay it down because I had been seeking a company that was really all about, you know, allowing me to bring those expertise to the table but also allow me to be me. Let me tell you guys, like it's hard to find leadership that will allow you to do those things. And then I answered a fate, like just like a faithful reply to an email, a blind email to somebody I didn't know named Doug. 
he reached out to me and he said, Hey, I want to talk to you because we have these amazing owners and I would be remiss not to talk to you about this, about this, um, opportunity. He said, I, I know you're a faith-based woman. I know your background. Would you please come talk to us? And without thought, I replied. And as you guys can imagine, like the second I sat down with Mark and Cindy in their living room, I mean, like, I will tell you, like Cindy was crying. I was crying. I was like, I just want to be, because here's the thing I can always tell you guys, like I'm the same Meredith Teason on social media in person, as well as professionally. Like there's not two of me. There is one of me. Sometimes I'm goofy. Sometimes I'm crazy, but you get it all, all in one. But more than anything, I told them I wanted to be able to be with a company that I can share my expertise, but do it in a way that still honors my father and why I'm here. And that was the number one thing. I knew about the company. I knew about the great products. I mean, who has not heard about the crazy rap company? You know what I'm saying? Like I had heard about everything. I had heard about the things that they had done and I had heard about the leadership. So I knew the products were efficacious. That was a no brainer. Like there is not a company out there that's been around 21 years that has like horrible products and do nothing, right? You have to, the only way is that the products have to work because this is word to mouth. And if they don't work word to mouth, it shuts down pretty quick. And so the products I knew were efficacious. I knew that this channel was the right channel for distribution. And I knew the runway for health and wellness. It's something I've actually been passionate in, in the last 10 years. Like I said, I didn't grow up on health and wellness. I'm just keeping it real. Um, like, give me all, give me all the things. That's how I roll. Like I work out so that I can eat. That's, that's how, that's how things work. But I knew how the, the world was shifting. The mindset was shifting with our younger generation coming up. And then when I met Mark and Cindy and knowing their heart, it was like answered prayers. That's all I can. That's the only way I can equate it. It was answered prayers. The cherry on top has been the fact that I've entered into a field of leaders like I've never experienced before. I will tell you guys, this has been the most accepting. If you're brand new, you probably are feeling this as well. Like it's almost like, um, is this for real? Like somebody pinch me a little bit. The most accepting, the most collaborative and transparent, the most authentic, loving people I've ever had the opportunity to work with in the field. And I will tell you that hands down, like, I told Mark and Cindy the other day at a dinner, I said, the thing that it works has is it's truly building a legacy that we're never going to know the ripples that we're going to touch in the lives that we're going to touch on this side of heaven. And that is the difference maker. And that is something that just gives me chills all the time. So that's just a little bit about my background. Um, like I said, I've been in a long time. I've been a consultant in the field. So I know exactly what it's like to be in your shoes. When I first started, we didn't have cell phones, you guys. I went door to door. Rusty can remember, like literally went door to door. I was, I told you I was a little crazy, right? You have to be a little crazy to just be like, I'm going to go door to door and sell some stuff. Like, that's just what I'm going to do. Um, but I had a passion and I had a mission and I had, I had a why that, that the how didn't matter, but the why was what was driving it. And, and that's what you have to remember. So as you're new coming in, or if you're seasoned, or if you're 20 years in, you have to remember the how doesn't matter. You'll make it happen if the why is big enough. If your why is so strong, it shakes you out of bed. And, um, and that was me. And so I've walked in your shoes. I walked in your shoes just a couple of years ago again, because I thought, well, can I do this twice? And I was fortunate to do just that. I was able to grow another uh, business out in the field uh, and hit their highest ranks. But again, something wasn't lining up and God had a higher calling for me. And I'm so blessed that I followed him. So I share all of that to say, I'll never coach you guys on something that I haven't probably tried and trued myself. I'll never coach you and tell you to go do something that um, I also probably haven't struggled with. And I'm also going to share with you guys too, like there's no struggle that probably the other person next to you or in the other cube hasn't dealt with man or woman, no matter the age, because the, the things that attack us in this field, in this channel 
are typically things that we all will face at one time or another. So I wanted to start with that. I will tell you guys, I live in Las Vegas with my husband and my my two fur babies. Um, and uh, we just absolutely love it here. It's been a gorgeous day outside, as you guys can see. Um, so that's just a little bit. Uh, but Carissa, do you guys have questions? I want to I want to dive in. Well, I'll start with one and then from there, anyone else can add on to it. Uh, either put it in the chat or send it to me or unmute and ask, like, you know, be bold and just ask. So oh. I, right. I have a question. So um, just in general, what would be your suggestion as far as, um, well, not really suggestion, as far as the company is growing, like, you know, the summer is here. Everybody's more excited. Like I swear every year this happens to me. I get excited. Because now the kids are out of school, which means the focus is no longer on homework, picking up, dropping off, and any of that other related things. Because now we can all be siblings and I don't have to worry about being mom anymore. But then you switch over and now you're siblings. And now it just seems like your time is really just like, where to go? So it's no changes really so much. It's like you get even busier. So what would be um, a suggestion for you as far as it goes is the summer is here now. And people were feeling that same way, like, yeah, but then it just like, you know, August, September just shows right up tomorrow. What would be your suggestion as far as time management goes for the summer for everyone? Oh my gosh. I love this question. Okay. Who has not like, just be honest, like who has not struggled with time management ever in their life? Like seriously, drop a one, raise your hand. Everybody everybody struggled with it. I will tell you, I've coached on this for years. And when I went back into the field, um, I struggled with it again. As a matter of fact, I, I was like, oh, you know, I mean, I'm going to get up tomorrow. I'm going to, I'm going to do my follow-ups. I'm going to do my reach outs. I'd wake up, you know, and I was like, you know, I'm just going to run to the gym for like 30 minutes, you know, get a quick little workout in. And then I'd get home and I was like, oh, I've got to make myself a little snack. Cause I'm starving. I don't want to be hangry when I'm talking to people and reaching out. The next thing, you know, I was like, oh, well, I better thaw dinner, you know, so I can be a good wife for once. And I better go throw in the laundry. You know, I should just go ahead and shower. Does anybody, right? Like that's for real. That is for real time. It just, it goes, it is, it is like a moment. I, I remember as a kid, when my parents would be like, it's like, it's like dust Meredith. It just evaporates. And I'd be like, whatever, it just drags on. No, it's like poof and gone. And when I went back into the field, I struggled with this for about the first three weeks. And then I was like, okay, Meredith, you ain't, you don't have time for this. You have got to set some boundaries. And so here's what I came up with. I came up with 345s. So I want you guys to write this down. 345s, okay? 345s became my non-negotiable. And that's the other thing. You have to have non-negotiables in this business, or I guarantee you what you're saying yes to means you're saying no to your dream. And you better write that down too. Like I made sure that I had at the top of my notebook, what you say yes to, this is what you're saying no to. And right under the no was my goals. Because I needed to see it in writing with my own penmanship. And I have horrible penmanship. But I needed to see it. And this is what 345s were. I realized that, you know, saying, I'm going to sit down at my desk for the first three hours and do my do. My do. No. Uh-uh. Every time I get distracted. So I started doing 345s. The first 45 minutes, okay, they're 45 minute stints, not an hour, because an hour is a little bit too long. It's easy to get distracted. But I decided I could do 45 minutes. If it meant cutting out a TV show, I could cut out a TV show, okay? The first 45, always, always, always is on your personal business. It is on only follow-ups and reach outs. That's it. Those two actions. It is not scrolling on Instagram. It's not doing a post. It's not picking up the phone and calling Rusty or Carissa and saying like, can you tell us like all the things? No, 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 no. It is on, it's not calling your accountability partner either, which probably turns into a griping partner, right? Or all the other things. It was focused on those two things, reach outs and follow-ups. That is it. Like turn off your, your uh, uh, notifications on social media, 
and go do your follow-ups and reach outs. That first thing. The second 45 was about posting because if I'm talking on the phone, my business is open on the phone. If I'm texting people, it's open on the phone. If I'm following up, it's open. But I also had to make sure it was open on social media. So it was about posting 45 minutes. You guys, I was following up with a post, posting everywhere I needed to post, posting on team pages, post, posting wherever I needed to, 45 minutes. Keeping it to 45 minutes on social media, I ain't, I'm not gonna lie, it's hard. But you know what I realized? I don't need to have the perfect post. If something was spelled wrong, I guarantee you somebody was pointing it out and that meant it was somebody watching my post. That was, that was somebody who was paying attention. So the second was always posting. It was my social media. I didn't do any other social media after that. That's it. The third, if I was, if, if your brand's making new, the third is following up again and doing more reach outs, possibly hopping on a team call. Okay. If you have a team, the third 45 is to check in with your team members. Now, here's the thing about leaving them for last. First and foremost, as a leader, whether, whether you're new in the business or not, how you lead right now yourself is how you're going to be as a leader. Okay. You have to be able to lead yourself in business first. And if you can lead yourself in business first by taking care of your business first, you can lead others. Because I tell you what, if you're not doing the do, I guarantee you, they're going to know it. They're going to sniff it out. The other thing is too, this gave me great verbiage to talk to my team about because I'd be like, Hey, Rusty, how's it going today? What's going on? He'd be like, Oh, I haven't done my reach outs yet. Or, Oh, Meredith, you know, I had this LC call me and they want to cancel. You know what? I was talking to an LC today too, had the same thing happen. Here's what I did instead. It gave me in the day not a week ago, examples to talk to my own team about. So they could also hear the words that I was saying. It kept me fresh and new in the conversations. And you guys, I found that I was easily doing three 45s throughout the day to the point I was like, you know what? It's time to add one more. And I started adding a fourth 45. But when you start mastering three 45s, and this is doable across the board, you guys, we're talking we're talking less than two hours and 15 minutes of your day, okay, to work your business. But here's the thing. If you're consistent with it, you'll get faster at what you do. You'll be more efficient in everything, and you'll get traction. I got to the point in the first 45, I knew what I was saying and who I was reaching out to. I'd scroll through. I could reach out to, no lie, Anywhere from 500 to 1,000 people on social media with voice messaging, voice texting, Marco Polo, via text as well. So I could do that in, in about the first 45 to 45, 20 and get my posting done because I became so efficient. I knew exactly what I was reaching out and saying. Now, that was, that was not in a day. But in a, in a good month, I was reaching out to that many people, which meant that I was bringing in anywhere from 14 to 15 DTs a month on average. I was bringing in customers. I was getting things ready for events. And the fourth 45, when I started at it, that's what it was. It was events. Because here's the thing. We do two things three ways. Okay? That's all we do. We share the business and we share the products. Those are the two things that we get to do. We share the opportunity. We share the product. We do it three ways. We do it voice to voice or belly to belly as it's called through social media and through events. You guys, and you have to become masters at those two things, those three ways for you to get good traction. There is not just one way to do this business. If you're good at social media, that is great. Keep doing it. However, you've got to add the extension of the other arm. If you're good and rusty, I know you're good belly to belly, but you've had to learn the other extensions of the arm, right? Because we grew up old school. It was all about events and it was all about belly to belly. We've had to include this new thing called social media that goes through this. That's kind of awkward at times. But those are the things that you have to do. So Krista, I hope that helps. I recommend you implement that. And the last thing around getting 345s, find an accountability partner where you go exactly like this. My accountability partner, we used Marco Polo. 
I would click on Marco Polo early in the morning. I'd be like getting ready for my first 45. That was it. That was my math. That was the whole entire message right there every day. Getting ready for my first 45. Getting ready for my second 45. Getting ready for my third 45. And then at the end of it all, because I had to do my due first, then we would have a little chat session debrief. And we'd go back and forth on Marco Polo. And we would talk about the woes, the highs, and the lows. Okay? That's my best time management tip. I love that, especially at the end where you just debriefing each other and not really just wasting time going back and forth and then you're wasting time and then you're not focused on what you're supposed to focus on. So I love that. Uh, I have a, another question for you from someone that want to remain anonymous. Um, when your upline quits, you no longer have that upline um, helping you anymore or you, you look towards as a mentor of such, uh, what would be your suggestion as to finding another mentor and or someone that you feel, I guess, you look up towards? What would be suggestions on finding someone to look up towards? Such a great, great question. Okay, so let me just say this first. Um, I know that, that you join a business 99.9% .9 of the time with a friend. Okay. I get that. I totally get that. But the beauty about this business is you truly, everybody has the same information at the same time. That's the beauty. Like you can go into eSuite and the connect app. You're going to get the same information as our top leaders about what's going on at the same time. Now there's not a lot of things that you can do in life where that's going to be the case, but this is the case. And, and sometimes people give up on themselves. And so you've got to be able to give them grace and let them go and then find that person you're going to chase. And here's the thing. I was in a lot of, well, not a lot. I was in two different sports as a kid and through my teenage and, and high school and uh, young adult years. And I had an instructor when I was really young, tell me Meredith. So I was in martial arts. He was like, Meredith, you see that girl over there? And I was like, yeah. And he said, uh, she has the perfect roundhouse kick. You not so much. And I was like, that's rude. He said, I want you to, to chase her roundhouse kick until you become better than her. And that's exactly what I did. And then I realized about two months later, he came to me and he said, do you see that guy's hook kick? Hey, their hook kicks beautiful. Yours, not so much. You see what he did there? He kept helping me level up in small steps. So you guys, when, when I went back into business, I started, I started looking around to the left and right of me and I started listening on calls and I would, I would, I would find people on team calls and stuff that I was going to chase. If they had great language, I was going to have better language. If they were really great at events and, and the, the leader on the call was like, oh, you know, let me just say, um, Orlando over here had one of the best events. I mean, they signed 10 new distributors and 15, uh, uh, loyal customers. And one night I was like, all right, game on Orlando. Like you've met your, yeah, you've met your match. And it became an internal challenge for me. But the other thing I did is I would go to my leader and I would say, what do they got that I need? Because see, here's the thing in this business to be great, to be great. You guys, you have to understand that feedback is a gift. Feedback is a gift because no one's got to give you feedback to make you better. But if somebody comes to you, if Rusty comes to you, Chris comes to you, Orlando comes to you, even if they come to me after this call and they say, Hey, Maris, we need to give you some feedback. I'm going to look at it as they're giving me a gift for me to level up. And sometimes you've got to go to them and say, okay, Orlando's doing these events and they're like fire. I'm doing events. No one's showing up. What am I doing? You've got to be ready for some feedback. It's not that it's, you're horrible at events. It's here's some ways that you could make them better. Maybe, maybe you need to send out invitations. Maybe you need to call people and follow up before the event takes place. Orlando does that, you know, a couple hours hours before the event, just to make sure he does these best practices. And so if you guys have somebody who has quit and you're like, oh, what do I do now? No, no, no. That's just right here between the, the six inches between your ears. 
You've got to be able to say, "Mm, no, I didn't need them. They just got, they helped me get here, but something else is going to lead me to my greatness. I've just got to be open for feedback. I've got to be willing to have some coaching and I've got to be willing to go hunt for it. You see, just because God brings you to it doesn't mean he's going to serve it on a platter for you. Sometimes you've got to go hunt and kill it, skin it, gut it, and do all the the icky work, right? I used to work for a taxidermist. I know these things. Like sometimes you got to get a little, little down and dirty in it all. I know things you just didn't even know about me to be able to go sit at the table and have a great meal. And so who do you want to chase? What do you, if, if you're looking at the top, top, maybe, maybe the top 10 is too high, then maybe you go, you know what? I could be just like 150 in the company. I'm going to, I'm going to study them. I'm going to watch their social media. You don't have to take a lot of time. We're not talking a deep dive, but we're talking about paying attention and then getting some minor tweaks in your business. And that's what the greats do. They study, they become masters, but nobody's going to come out and master it right away. You've got to stay consistent in your growing. And so if you've had a leader leave you, if you've had a sideline, a downline leave you, hey, understand that that they, they got what they needed out of it, they felt. It's okay to bless and release and love them. If they've brought you into the business, thank them. You will forever be thankful. And it, And it just was their time to move on. But the gift that they left behind in you doesn't stop with them leaving. You have to decide. And that's where, again, remember, like I said in the very beginning, you've got to know what your why is and have it so strong that you go, I'll figure out the how. I can figure that out. Because let me tell you something, you guys, it doesn't matter if you talk eloquently and if you have a big vernacular, if you know all the ingredients and the products, it doesn't matter if you know all the details of the program, none of that matters, but your energy and your belief in yourself in the business, that's what matters. I guarantee you, you all know more about the products than I do. Guaranteed. I don't know half of our products, probably haven't even tried half of our products. But that wouldn't stop me from being more passionate and having more energy around it when I choose. And when I decide to get in front of somebody that I go, you need this. I've got the thing. I don't know everything about it, but I don't need to. Because I have harnessed over time enough skill. I've listened to enough people. I've, I've watched enough people to, to tweak a few things to be able to have those confident energetic and passionate conversations to know that that right there is the power and the secret sauce. And that was powerful. I don't know if you just had that like waiting in the box to just pull out and say, Ooh, that was a good one. (laughs) Hey, I, I, I channeled God tonight. I said, listen, you're going to, you're going to just give me the wisdom and I'm going to speak it out. Well, it's definitely, it's definitely helped. What about, uh, all right, I got another one here. I like this one. This this is real small and sassy. I think it can really uh, help a lot. What would would you suggest in reference to some people getting their their mojo back, their their way of dreaming again to get that mojo? Such a great question. Again, man, you guys are good tonight. Um, How to get- Just pull it on out the box. how How to get your mojo back, you know? Um, you guys, there's going to be, there's going to be ebbs and flows in this business, just like with anything. I don't know. I've been married for, I've been with my husband. Gosh, we've been together, uh, 22 years. And I have loved him through it all, but I haven't liked him through it all. Right. Okay. That's just real talk. And this business can be like that sometimes too, with any business, with anything, with anything. Like, I'm pretty sure I can ask y'all who are mamas. Sometimes you love your children or or daddies. You love your children, but you might not like them all the time, but you still will find the love back for them. If you feel like you have lost your mojo a little bit, there's, there's a couple of things. The first thing is, is sometimes you're just in a season and you need to ask yourself, who are you listening to? Okay. Because attract uh, like attracts like, If you're in a bad season, 
you need to identify if the people that you're talking to are also in that bad season. And if so, like cut them loose, like go, go get with somebody positive because they'll just continue to swirl. Right. And it'll just continue to cause the bad season versus saying, you know what? I've got to get around some positive people. I get a, I got to get around somebody who has passionate passion for this business. I've got to get around somebody who's, who's doing the do and not just swirling in the swirl. Right. So that's one thing. The second thing is to, and, and this is where if you're brand new, okay. If you're brand new, you've probably just heard about, you know, let's go identify your why. I'm a firm believer that you need to make sure that your why is different from your goals. A lot of times when we start talking about our why and we start talking about things, we start identifying them as goals. And a lot of times when I talk to people and they're like, we just don't have our mojo. You know what I mean? I've already, I already achieved this level. I already paid off this debt. I've already done X, Y, and Z. And it starts to almost dampen the spirit a little bit because you've achieved it. Well, now what? I don't know what my why is. That's a goal. If it's a, if it's attainable, that's a goal. Your goals have to drive you to your greater purpose of your why. And so I'm, I'm really careful in making sure that people understand your purpose, right? It's the thing that'll shake you out of bed. It's the thing that if, if something happens, if somebody tries to knock you off your game, if somebody tries to dampen your spirits, or if you yourself run into a roadblock, it'll overcome it. The goal are the small steps that keep you running and keep you motivated in a different way. They're the things like paying off debt, getting that title, um, paying for vacation. Those are the things that come from pursuing that long-term why, chasing it down. And so if if you have lost your mojo, I'm going to challenge you on a couple of things. First, who are you hanging around? Who are you listening to? Are you allowing other people's excuses to live in your mind? Are you, are you surrounding yourself with the right people? And the next thing is, is have you truly identified what your purpose is? Um, I'll share this with you guys. I was, um, I will tell you, I struggled with this at one point. Um, I've struggled with it a couple of times in a lot of different ways. And I was actually just a little backstory. I was brought up, um, in a very, uh, very poor household, like great parents, but financially, like we were poor, like I tease people. And I'm like, we were just poor because we couldn't even afford the double O we really couldn't. If people didn't drop off food to our doorstep and close to our doorstep, we didn't eat. We'd have Cheerios. If we didn't go out and kill a deer, we, we really didn't have meat. Um, my dad dug ditches for $3 an hour. My mom worked multiple jobs. I've had a full-time job of anywhere from, uh, 40, 60 and 80 hours a week since I was 10 years old. No lie. Like that was my life. I grew up in, in a great family environment where my parents were like, drown out the noise. You can go be anything. But with that came a sacrifice and the sacrifice was education. Um, I, I got my GED at 15 years old. I'm pretty sure I forged, uh, my age, but I got my G at 15. So I could go get, um, a real job that wasn't under the table. And because of some of those things, I didn't have the same type of schooling that a lot of people had. I didn't go to college, none of that stuff. It wasn't on the table. And I remember like my purpose and my passion has been so defined since I was young, like nothing could shake me until something did. And it almost paralyzed me probably for the rest of my career because I had a situation where I was questioned, um, and it still bothers me today that it got to me. Um, but I had somebody question if I was, uh, smart basically. And that five letter word became like the worst curse word for quite a while. But here's the thing. 
And, and I will tell you guys, I started, I started my own mental swirl. Like, kid you not, it was, it was ugly. And years before that, I had mentors tell me that you've got to have the right people around you or the wrong people will drag you down every time. And thank, thank you, Lord. I have great people that I listen to. And I will never forget where I was at, what I was doing. And I'll never forget the words that were spoken to me when I asked somebody if they thought I was smart. You guys, I was in my thirties. Like I had a great career at that time. And I seriously was like, I need to go be a waitress again because I shouldn't be in corporate America. Like it brought me to my knees. But because I had shared my passion and my purpose, because I had people that I had given authority, right? You had to give people authority for your mojo to speak the words of truth over you. Because sometimes we are not strong enough. Even in the Bible, we're supposed to have people who we turn to, right? Like the lame man had four friends carry him to the roof and lower him down. He didn't do that. But we are to have people around us that we give authority to, to say, speak truth and life over me. And I will tell you that when that happened and that took place, it still took me some time, but slowly, but surely I started coming back because the person was like, you are too good to sit on a couch and to let somebody taint your mind and to take your mojo from you and to keep you from walking in your purpose. And that's, if you have lost your mojo, you have given too much room to the wrong message that is taking up occupancy in your mind that is feeding that. And and here's the thing. You are the only one who can say like, enough is enough. Like that is not going to be the words that I listen to. If somebody has ever told you you're not pretty, if they've told you you're not smart, like the word, like. I, seriously, I can tell you exactly where I was sitting when somebody looked right at me and they said, you just don't have the pedigree. Well, I've got news for you. My father said I did, and that's all that mattered. And he's the one who anoints and appoints. And that's all I need to know. And so I'm going to continue to walk in that purpose. But you've got to make sure, especially in this channel, because it is so easy for people to have words that we put value over. Like who are they? They're probably not living out their purpose. They're just like walking around zombie land over there, all negative Nelly and, and pooping on everybody. And they just want to poop on you too. And here's the thing. You've got to remember that you were made for greatness and that you were born for more. So you want your mojo back. You go get on your knees. You go talk to your savior. You remember that you are the daughter or the son of the king of the most high. And you start listening to what he has to say about you because he's the only one that matters. And you've got to realize he brought you to this so he can use this as a vehicle to get you to where you're supposed to be and how you're supposed to be walking. That's all you need to know. Sorry, I got a little fired up. I get a little carried away. And here's the thing, you guys, it still affects me to this day that I looked at my husband and I asked him if he thought I was smart. Because I will tell you, that man about broke hearing those words come out of my mouth. And I guarantee you, I will never, ever ask anybody that again. Because I know that I know my father has given me everything I need to walk in any room or any situation or anything in this world and on this side. So as you guys are thinking like, where's my mojo or what about my upline? No, no, no. He doesn't, he doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies the called. Okay. So you guys have everything you need. Don't you dare sell yourself short for one single second longer, not a single second. And 
I mean, ooh. can you imagine that you probably went through what you went through so that you can spread that word? Let us hear it too, you know? That's and right. So yeah. many people needed that as well because if everyone has a trigger word, it can be fat, it can be dark, it can be anything. Everyone has a trigger. Yep. And you just have to make sure you keep the power within that trigger and don't let it affect you. I love that. Oh, look at everybody wiping them tears off. <laughs> Orlando, I'm you know- sweating, I'm crying. I'm like all fired up. <laughs> fired up and crying to get the same time. Orlando, you know how to unmute so you can ask your question? Uh, yes, can you hear me okay? Yes, sir. Okay, uh, Meredith, um, I, I, I'm from a Baptist background, so I was up here at Amen and Hallelujah the whole time with your whole testimony here, so that was very powerful. Um, I'm, I'm, I am a three-day newbie to um, It Works. Uh, thank you, Ronnie, and um, thank you, Rusty, for getting me here. Um, I've been in network marketing in different companies, uh, marginal success. Um, the time is now. This is it. Um, it's going to work. Uh, for me, and I would ask this, normally when you come into a company, everybody says, well, forget what you learned at another company, we're different, and you need to have this mindset. If you had like one or two or three things that you would say, if you really want to get off to a good start and really build that momentum, what tips would you offer to somebody like me who's new to this company in terms of focus, perspective, you know, um, and, and the like? Okay, such a great um uh, such a, a good question because here's the thing you have been in those other companies to utilize the tools that you've already learned and right. and sometimes sometimes right you can overthink things I, exactly. I always tell people like ignorance on fire in this channel and you already know this it goes so far it, again it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you know the products, the plan, the ingredients, the, the all of this or that. It just matters that you're passionate, you're fired up, you're energetic, and you know that you're in the right spot. Because I mean, you've got a Baptist background. You know when you feel passionate about something, you're gonna win, right? The one with the most energy in the room around what they're passionate about wins. Like there are certain things you can talk to me about, like, like y'all just heard, I'm so passionate about it. And I am so sure that what I am saying is the truth. I would dare somebody to be like, well, that's not true. Cause I'd be like, Oh, you, you just activated the wrong level. Like I'm now going to take it on. Right. Like there's activating a level and there's like, Oh, you hit the wrong level. Because you just know. So I think the thing that I would share is three days in, just be on fire, right? You know, there's nothing, there's nothing like, um, it's a lot like a, a church and salvation. There's nothing like a new, a new Christian. There's nothing like they just beam, they just share. They, they, there's no, there's no apology. They're just on fire. You've got to have that same fire and you've got to be on fire and take the things that you've learned, apply what works and, and be coachable to a few other things. But here's the thing. The great thing about this channel is that there's no new system, right? I mean, there really isn't. So like we do three, we do two things, three ways. We do three things. Like really it's, it's the same, but the difference is who we get to partner with. The difference is the efficacy in the products. The difference is the results that we get to see. The difference is, is the, the compensation and how it pays and how great it pays. Those are the differences. So that's what I would tell you. Excellent. Spot on. And I am fired up and passionate. Awesome. Me too. I tell you, you guys, like, um, I, I keep finding different ways to like make all the different concoctions. I have so much fun. I totally shut down my blender though, because I put too much in my little teeny tiny blender today. I see somebody just started laughing. I'm still learning, but I, I love it. I'm also the queen of like, well, let's just put everything in one thing and just drink at one time. Cause you know, I, who's got time, but I love, I love it. I absolutely love it. Absolutely. Meredith, thanks so much. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Thanks for letting me pick on you earlier. I was scrolling. Up looking. <laughs> hey, that's how you get known. <laughs> Thank you.
So one last thing to close us out. Today is the 21st. <laughs> we only have about a good, uh, I don't even want to try to calculate, eight, nine days, nine days left. 30 minus 30. Okay, there we go. Nine days left. What would you say to finish this month off? You know, we have those procrastinators that wake up on the 25th. They need to wait today instead of the 25th. So what would you say is just a tip to close us out on um, just, uh, you know, ending this month? You know, as you guys are thinking about where you're at with your goals uh, now, I'm going to ask, a, I'm going to ask for a transparency uh, comment here. I'm going to pull up the chat really fast. How many of you all show, show uh, a one you've achieved your goals already with a two, you haven't achieved your goals yet. And with a three, if you don't think it's possible to achieve your goals. One, if you've achieved it, two, if you haven't achieved it yet, three, if you don't even think it's possible and be, and be completely transparent and honest. That's the only way. It's the only way to be. Okay. A lot of twos, a couple of, okay. Three. Thank you. Okay. Three on some days. I love that. So honest. Okay. You guys, here's the thing is that, oh, I love that you said that fear. Okay. Miss Stephanie, thank you for being so honest. I love that. Here's the thing is that you guys have nine days, like you have nine days, you have nine days to offer an opportunity of hope. I don't know you guys, you already heard it. Like I, I honestly, I don't know of another channel, another opportunity that offers every single person out there, the ability to have an even kill playing field. Like it doesn't matter your race. It doesn't matter your educational background. It doesn't matter if you grew up on the right side of the tracks, the wrong side of the tracks, poor, rich, doesn't matter if you're man, woman, whatever. It, it doesn't matter. Everybody has the opportunity. But the thing is, is is that the opportunity will only go as far as, as you share it. And what an opportunity we have to share. And so when I look at it, you have, you have nine days to bless as many people as you can share this opportunity with. Fear, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you, fear is a liar. You have nine days, nine days to bless people with this whether that's to get them on their own health journey, whether that is to bless them with a great opportunity, you have nine days. So maybe the thing is, you know what, tomorrow you start your 345s. Maybe you start small, start with 345s and, and understand that you have to know what is a negotiable and what is not a negotiable, even in the summertime, because here's the thing, it's summertime right now, but next it's going to be school is starting. We got to get the kids back in school. And then it's going to be, well, the holidays are here and, you know, we really just want to focus on family. And then the next thing, you know, it's going to be, well, it's going to be the new year. So I'm just going to wait on that. And then the next thing, you know, it's going to be, well, I mean, school's about right. There's always going to be a reason not to do. You've got to understand if you have a burning desire and a goal and you have your why and you have those things that are aligned, you're going to have to have some short-term term pain for long-term gain. Like you guys, I will forever be grateful for the fact that I started off at 10 years old cleaning carcasses and working in cleaning hotel rooms and working in restaurants and putting in the hard work, like working three jobs and any side jobs I could in my twenties and doing whatever it took, not going to friends, friends, girlfriends, things and, and nights out and saying no to families. There is sacrifice that you have to decide. Are you going to do it to achieve your goals? And are you also going to do it to be able to offer somebody that uh, same opportunity? So <clears throat> my, my say would be you have nine days, you have nine days. Maybe you're, maybe you're not going to hit your goals. Maybe you will, but you're not going to hit them if you do nothing. That's the thing. So what do you want to do about it? <coughs> I look at it this way. 
I don't know if I get tomorrow, but I get today. I'm going to give it all I've got. I'm going to put it all on the line because not only are you all worth it, I'm worth it. Sorry, I'm choking. <laughs> it's okay. We appreciate you. Oh, I, I mean, I don't even know what to say after that. I'm just excited. Nine long days ahead of us. Take them day by day. Appreciate each one. Continue to do uh, what she just put, implemented. It's in the chat. Three, four, yeah, three, 345. 45s. I was ready to take three until you wrote it and then it threw me off. <laughs> Rusty, you have anything to say? She got yeah. about three minutes left. Uh, you know, it's not okay to be average and you can make any excuse in the world that you, you can. When people told me this network marketing, MLM, scammy stuff didn't work. I've been here 21 years living in this crazy lifestyle. I mean, you have to ask them who stretches me. And when you, when you find out the people that stretch you, that group continues to get smaller, smaller. And if you're the head of the class, you're in the wrong class. And so what stretches you? Once you stretch your mind, once the mind gets really stretched, it can never go back to the original size. And once you've tasted a life of significance, a life of significance, you will never be go back to that other life. You, you'll do whatever it takes to get to the next level. You have to believe in you and never allow nobody else to impose their limitations on you. If you're going to give me advice, I want to see your before and afters. Has somebody that challenges us today? I said, well, hey, I got some before and afters. I made lots of millions of dollars. I'm not bragging about that. I said, but my team, I have over 100 people that's made over millions of dollars. That's pretty significant to me. And I said, tell me, why would you say something like that? They see you're going to have these haters. You're going after the big dream, but you can't tell a big dream to a small minded person. And once you get those haters, you can say, well, I'm doing what I need to do to prosper, to go to the next level because I am stretching. I'm stretching out of that particular circle of influence. It could be family members. I'm stretching past them. I'm going to have a new group to run with. It's going to celebrate who I am and we're going to work hard again. That's what teamwork is all about. Ain't nothing changed since I first got in. The work ethic is, is going to be the work ethic. You do have some other avenues now, but I promise you, there's people you've never been in a more opportune time in the history of my 60 years of existence. The time in our economy is right. People are looking for you to show up and do one thing, call to action, ask, call to action. And uh, uh, Meredith, uh, you remember the day your husband asked you to marry you? Oh, I sure do. So he did have to ask you, or you would still just be dating, or you'd have kicked him to the curb. But see, he had to ask to get the commitment to what? So we can do this thing called life together. People yeah. are waiting on you to show up and just ask. And if yeah. you're scared of the no word, what is that? That you've already planted the seed. If you have no seeds planted, you can never get a harvest, but you have to continually cultivate. I love the follow-up aspect. That's something we are big in every single day. Follow up, follow up, work with the team. And I'm always prospecting for new people. And you know what? You might have a two or three win two or three week window when you're just filling a pipeline back up. You're doing the follow up and people get ready. Just because they say no today, they might be ready next week. I got your good one. It's gonna happen on Friday. Played baseball with the kids when I was like in the first grade. He's been secretly following me all these years. He finally reached out three weeks ago because he needs something done for his health and he's already in sales. It's not quite cutting it. So I gave him a twofold opportunity. Well, I said, I don't know if it'll work for you, but God, if it a little bit will happen to you, what have happened to me a whole lot of, you're going to really get your health back in line. And I said, if this business, if you apply yourself and you'll get the blonder zone and you, you think that you believe in, I deserve the life of significance because my wife does, my kids do, but I believe other people do. So what I want to do is I want to give you your life back. And yeah. so when I make, you make up your mind, you're going to give somebody's life back. So you've got to be willing to stretch. And once you stretch, all we can do so, so we can do this together. If we all stretch together, there's absolutely nothing that can stop us. If I filled one of my Suburbans up today, it's $138. Again, did that really bother me? Yeah, I'm pissed off as I can be about it. Did it really stop me from doing it? No, it did not. Because I've been, I've been used to living a life of significance not that I'm better than anybody. It's just a way of life. I choose to, to not be broke like we were when we first got, uh, my wife and I first got gold. Mm -hmm. So here's what I want to tell you. Make up your mind today that you, you're worth it, that you're going to live the life of significance. You're going to create a generational wealth, not a generational curse. 
stop feeling sorry for yourself because things just didn't quite go your way today. Say, so don't go my way every day. N never. But you know what? I'm going to get up every day. And I'm going to fight. I'm going to fight until I win. I've been doing this for 21 years. And they told me this would not work. <clears throat> I would have to go back to doing whatever. Well, those are the people that are still punching clocks. I don't punch clocks. There is not an alarm clock in my home. It, it is forbidden to walk into my house on my properties with alarm clocks on. Period. You know why? Because I live naturally. I'm not saying I'm better than nobody. I'm just a country boy from the mountains of Virginia by way of North Carolina. But when I met Mark <laughs> Pentecost and he gave me his word and we shook hands, and then three months later, he sold his house so he could pay me my commissions. He put his family's way of life on the line for me. So anything you're using right now, just sit your ass on fire. They'll come to watch you burn. And, you know, when you go out there, you're only looking for a significant amount of people, a small, minute, significant amount of people that's going to run with you. You get in harness. I played football many years. It was 11 men on the field, 58 men on the roster. But there's only 11 out there at the time, the ones that really paid the price that got to start. We were on the field. When we come off the field, our uniforms was just tore up, dirty, nasty. I didn't walk in the field house the way I left. That was the way I, I made up my mind. I'm going to give it all I've got. So here's what I'm, I'm going to leave you with. Get all in with heart. Lionel Richie wrote a song, I think, Mary, what was it, back in the 80s? You have to have love in your heart, heart in your love. So when you have heart in your love and when you share that, that with that person, people can hear you speak. People yeah. are looking for you to show up and speak that life into them. People are, they, they know this out there. They can't achieve it. They just got to get with the right team. I believe it works well was the best network marketing company in the world since the conception of the idea. You know why? I can't find many people has been to hitting the deal for 21 years. It's got a successful organization. Have I ever got tired in the business? Yes. Oh yes. I've told Mark, I would even took some of the things I've told Mark, but he took it in stride and he always come back with something to build me up, but I never got tired of it. Do you know why? I was tired at the bank. I was tired in it. I was tired of it. Do you know why? Because I didn't have no full potential to go to the next level. I was blocked in that modern day slavery that they call a job. They call it dumbing down people nowadays. They've been doing it for generations. Just don't be caught up in that vicious cycle of being dumbed down that you don't believe. You, no, you don't deserve. No, no. If there's nobody had ever done it, be the first to do it. See, there's many people before you guys got here that's already done it. We still here doing it, still doing it. So this will take you to any lifestyle you, that you want. But you can't make a million dollars sitting on your ass hoping it's going to happen. You have to get in and go work like that guy that makes it. And I'm going to tell you what's going to change. As soon as you make the first one, you're going to start to believe you deserve it. And once you create and believe what you deserve, something better than what you have, you're willing to put that kind of professionalism into it. You know why? Because your whole sphere of influence, your whole group has changed. It's a smaller group, but it's the guys that are supporting you. So whatever you guys need here, I ain't going nowhere unless today is my last day. No, it's not happening. Unless God takes me out here tomorrow, you know, it's going to happen. I'll be here slinging and swinging tomorrow, right here. The same thing we've been doing for what, 21 years. And yeah. the next 21 is going to be better. And here's what I'm going to say. And I'm done, Carissa. You have a, you have a time you, you have, you're right now. You're in a position with everything we got going on now to have the, like the first month I had 21 years ago when we built a team of 635 people in 28 days, that took 20 hours a day to get it done seven days a week. But that, that my first income, somewhere around $10,000. And you look at the income disclosure, because we didn't even have one of those back then. We didn't even know it could be done. I thought, God, if I did this, what can I do next month? Yeah. That was pretty significant back then. But I had to go all in because I just walked away from the bank. I said, we're done. And the salary was gone. But you know what's going to happen now? There's going to be more people to duplicate everything we did and break all those records that, that, that we thought was so significant. There's people right now that's going to come in and create significance. It's going to dwarf anything we ever did. And you know what? I want to be right with that team spearheading that to the next level because I want you to go home and say, hey, baby dog, we're a full-time family now. Daddy's going to be here to take you to school. I'm going to be here to pick you up. And ain't nobody ever going to tell us what we can and can't do again. Nobody. And when you make up your mind, like Meredith, she got some fight in her a while ago. Did you see that? Challenge her and she'll bring it. That's the yeah. way you got to get when you're going after your freedom. Hey, the gate ain't never been locked. It's open. Get off the plantation. You stayed there too long because it's comfortable. But if you die there, you will die with nothing. When you got a life of significance, God puts you here on this earth and he gave you the particular talents. So you can never be 
never be lazy in the things that the, where you're strong in. Everybody here has strengths that you got right now that you're not using. You're underutilizing your talents and your strengths. Get that talent and strength and go kick somebody's ass this afternoon. Don't go to bed because it's nine or whatever clock it is. Like, I just had eye surgery. Don't see that well right this minute. But I can tell you what, if it takes it to midnight working the time zones, that's what we did back in the day. Do it right now. Find somebody in Cali that you can call. Find somebody somewhere that you can then we'll stop because somebody's waiting on that phone call for you to do one thing. Like Meredith said, he asked me and I said, yes. I said yes to his proposal. So good. Send the proposals out. When you do the asking, you're going to have some people that's going to say, yes, they want to be in business with you for life. I love it. Woo, y'all, we just got a whole lot of boom for this hour. And I hope y'all utilize that to push y'all right through June into July and as we go on. So we will be back again next Tuesday with our uh, team Zoom again. We are here every week consistently because that's what we do. We stay consistent. Even if we don't feel like being here, we stay consistent because the motivation will follow with the consistency that you put in place. So thank you guys so much. Thank Meredith, thank Rusty. Thank all you guys for putting your time, putting your efforts into everything and just being a better you. So till next week, talk to y'all again later. Otherwise, stay close to the fire. There's tons that you can do to stay close to the fire while you wait. Good night.